consider this to be the, the darkest chapter in Richmond Heights history, something that this police department really wants to solve. You know, I might not ever see her, but I'm hoping I do. I feel so sorry for the Kalorn family. I am 100% confident that Christine would probably still be alive today if her daughter didn't go missing. Heather Kalorn, a 12-year-old diabetic, disappeared July 15, 1999. Earlier in the month, she moved in with Dana Madden and Christopher Herbert to help care for their two-month-old daughter living at their apartment in the 1600 block of Yale Avenue in Richmond Heights. On the night of her disappearance, Heather had been alone with the infant while Madden was working and Herbert was out. Herbert came home around 4 a.m. I just walked in the house and noticed she wasn't there. My baby was crying, her shoes was laying in the floor, nothing was touched, nothing was out of place. And Heather gone. The major case squad was brought in. When we got there, Chris was there. Uh, Chris Herbert, the, the one that did some of the reporting. Uh, we went inside to the, to the apartment. Uh, there was blood on the couch. There was blood on a wash rag that was laying by the couch. There, were, there was blood on some pillows that had been stuffed behind a trash can. Uh, Heather's uh, diabetic medication was still there on the table. Uh, and like I say, there was, there was blood smeared quite a few places there. From the beginning, the investigation ran into roadblocks. Some potential witnesses were reluctant to cooperate. There were people at the scene that, that uh, we felt were just acting odd, uh, uh, no eye contact, uh, uh, did not want to uh, participate in any, any, any interviews. You know, they, uh, they just try, were trying to avoid everything. We just assumed that she was missing, that there was um, nothing more than that. Richmond Heights Mayor Jim Thompson has been haunted by the disappearance of Heather Kalorn. He was her principal at Blow Middle School, where she had just completed the sixth grade. Well, you always remember the sad circumstances whenever you're a teacher, eventually a principal. Um, and this is one of those one situations that um, I never forgot about Heather. Um, and what's kind of ironic or deja vu was me being principal of Blow Middle School, and then a number of years later, coming back being mayor of the city of Richmond Heights from where she, she left us. As I walk in the building every day, there's a picture of Heather on the outside. And so, of course, I remember Heather. As days turned into months and months into years, Detective Brown was relentless in his efforts to find out what happened to Heather and to bring whoever was responsible to justice. Brown and the department investigated more than 500 leads that took them from a cistern in Morehouse, Missouri, to leads in St. Genevieve County and Lincoln County, Missouri. The strong desire to bring peace to Heather, her mother Christine, and the Kalorn family was the driving force. We investigated every alleyway, you know, any alleyway that we, that we could, any aspect that we could find, you know, it was investigated. Uh, uh, new people in the investigation, uh, people that were originally in the investigation, um, but as far as a, a mindset, no, it, it really didn't. I, you know, we were still pursuing that, that, that investigation, and that never changed. Detective Brown retired in 2016. He regrets that Heather was never found and no one ever charged. And even in retirement, he's still thinking about pursuing justice for Heather. I woke up the other night and uh, uh, I, I was caught myself thinking about a lead that, that I had pursued that, that might have been pursued differently or that, or that somebody else might, might have been uh, pursued as far as a, uh, either a suspect, a witness, whatever. Uh, so, I mean, I, I still think about it. I mean, uh, and as I said, any investigator that uh, uh, has one of these cases, this type of case, is going to live that case uh, until it's solved. I just wish peace for this family. When Chief Jerry Rohr took over the police department, he prioritized Heather's case and assigned his detective supervisor to the investigation. With improved technology, the department has digitized hundreds of pieces of evidence to make them more easily accessible and a national organization has stepped in to help. Quite simultaneously and coincidentally, uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploiting Ch Exploited Children contacted us and, and they offered their assistance in uh, uh, retesting all the DNA evidence. 
So we went about, went about that process too with the hopes that you know, improved and newer technology might, might be able to uh, turn up a lead that, that we couldn't get um, previously. More recently, Rohr says there are new leads in the department's investigation that also give them reason for hope. For the first time in a while, we're following up on, on what I would consider more credible leads than we've gotten in the past several years. These particular leads I, I'm kind of excited about, and I would say that this is probably the most active that this case has been in, in over a decade. People in the community have to get behind this effort and realize that law enforcement is pursuing justice. Mark Kloss, founder of the Kloss Kids Foundation and whose own daughter was murdered 30 years ago, says with the determined efforts of investigators and new technology, this case just might get solved. I think this is a testament to law enforcement that they have taken a, almost a quarter of a century old case and are pursuing it with, with vigor. They want to know who killed this little girl, maybe even more than her own family does. And I, I think that that speaks very well. They're using technologies, the DNA technologies, DNA genealogy, which has done tremendous things over the past few years. And, you know, with a little bit of luck and a lot of hard work, they just might bring this to the conclusion that Heather deserves. Both Kloss and Rohr say, it's time for whoever is responsible for Heather's disappearance to be brought to justice. You don't start out a criminal history killing 12-year-old girls, nor do you conclude a criminal history by killing 12-year-old girls and then living a lawful life for the next quarter of a century. So there's a, it's a situation where the people that do these kinds of things their, their behavior escalates over time. I know that from my own case, from my own daughter's situation, that they don't get better, they get worse, they get more bloodthirsty, they get hungrier, they get more violent. Well, it's, it's beyond time to come forward with that information. This little girl needs peace. The remaining family members need peace. And please come forward and you can do so by contacting our detective bureau directly.